Ryan. I'm Michelle Peremsky. And I'm Pastor Ron Ween. And you're listening to the 180 Your Life podcast, the podcast where we incorporate health and wellness with the grief journey. Thanks so much for joining us. So today we are talking about part four of our Hope for the Holidays um, podcast series. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a five-part series. And today we're going to talk about empowering sacred spaces. So one of the challenges in moving forward with the holidays after loss is it's, it's just not going to look the same, is it? No. You go to the place that's familiar that you used to go with, the loved one that you had, and all of a sudden there's this empty feeling, or you try to avoid those places. And so you give them power over you instead of you reclaiming them, that you surrender to them somehow. Exactly, exactly. So um, my father just last week passed two days before Thanksgiving. And, um, and so part of the reason that I'm talking about it, so this is six days out that I'm talking about it so soon is because there are lessons that I'm learning, new lessons about how to um, use the steps in 180 Your Life, but also when you do, even more lessons open up. Yes. Yeah. So I'm amazed by that, actually. Um, so we had Thanksgiving. Um, my father passed Tuesday morning, and then Thursday is Thanksgiving. Wow. And then after that, that weekend, we're decorating Christmas trees. And usually that was a thing that we do. So for Thanksgiving, um, I had already... You know, I just surrender that it's not going to look the way that it was going to look before. And if somebody wants to come and join us, we're okay with that. But I also will ask my children, what do you want this to look like? What would be your favorite thing to do? Mm -hmm. And that, I think, really gives them a voice in what will resonate with them. Right. It, it also helps them be part of the grieving process mm -hmm. instead of being ignored or uh, isolated uh, you're actually demonstrating how grief is and what you're trying to do is help them with their grief and give them permission to find their rhythm of grieving yes so we had actually I, so what I did is I knew that I could only handle so many I actually did two dishes um, the cranberry sauce dish that my friend Linda <laughs> Woodley, <laughs> with her essential oils, that, was, that turned out really well. And um, I was texting her, I was like, what is that recipe again? I, we haven't done that video yet, you know. <laughs> we haven't edited it yet. Um, and, uh, and, and the other recipe with the, with the potatoes and the br Brussels sprouts. Who knew Brussels sprouts could taste that good? Yeah. So... <laughs> So we, I mean, I knew I could do those two things. Right. And then I communicated with my awesome neighbor that was going to bring the turkey. Um, this is what I can do. And then, you know what? Sometimes you're just going to buy some stuff that is pre-made, pre and that's going to be just fine. So yes. that's what I did. And um, I let the kids set the tone for, you know, we're going to have a meal together, and then we'll watch a movie, have some fun, play outside. And it kind of surrendering what I expected Thanksgiving to be and just accepting what Thanksgiving was and opening up my doors, um, let it transform. Yeah, and in that process, you're learning more things because if you would have tried to control all that, uh, you wouldn't have learned anything from what, what's going on. Right now, you're in the process of really learning the depths about your grief and how to handle it and how to manage it and how to uh, show your children that it's not something that you can avoid uh, or should avoid, but it's a healthy thing to continue the process and let yourself grieve the way you need to grieve. Yes. This, the, when, when my late husband passed, it was a huge, a lot of people came all at once, which I was very thankful for. Mm -hmm. This is a little more staggered because um, we have family in other parts of the country. Right. We're going to probably have the service two weeks out. And, um, and I kind of, I get the gig. 
So I would prefer to have people um, stagger their visit because I just got off the phone with a family member who's coming this weekend, that was a part of my family who's coming this weekend. And, you know, they, she said, do you want all of us to come at once? Do you want us to come on the day of the memorial service? And I go, well, a memorial service in a weird way is kind of like a wedding mm -hmm. in that you're not really going to hang out with the bride and groom. I mean, you're there to say hi, but you're not really there to, you know, have a deep conversation, <laughs> right. right? It's the same with a memorial service when you go the day of. Um, yes, you're there to reinforce community, to reinforce love and connection, but that's not really the time where you're going to have extended amounts of family time. So I kind of like the family staggering, you know, and we might have a smaller family service and then have a more public service Elaborate, in a couple yeah. weeks. Yeah. So not having expectations has been really helpful and being open you know the first night after my dad passed um the first so it was the morning I found out and then that evening some friends came over to watch a movie friends from my one of my daughter's class mm -hmm. and they were having a great time and like they do they go hey um can we sleep over can I sleep mm -hmm. over and I'm like yeah you can <laughs> and her exactly. mom said really and I go yeah the kids are going to play in the morning. They were jumping on the trampoline. They were having a great old time. And it just felt natural, you know, to let the kids. And the play of the child is the work of the adult. Mm. That's how they do things. That's how yes. they uh, manage this uh, tragedy and loss and, and uh, to, to actually play along with the grief because they can't stand that kind of intensity right. prolonged. Right. I totally agree. So we've got two, you know, two sort of things, at least examples that I have, mm -hmm. about empowering sacred spaces. One, well, since we're talking about Hope for the Holidays, I'll lead with this one, and then I'll go to the second one. Um, okay, so I got a series, like I got a thing about my ornaments. My Christmas ornaments aren't, we just don't throw some balls up on the tree, you know. Mm -hmm. We... Um, these ornaments mean, each ornament means something. And when we go to different places, different adventures, we buy an ornament to commemorate, to commemorate that yeah. so that we can talk about all the family um, stories. We, we really reinforce the family stories every year by looking at the ornaments and putting them up and decorating them. So our ornament collection has grown. I'm a little embarrassed to say I got three trees up. <laughs> so we've, got, <laughs> we've got three trees. I didn't mean to. But, hey, I found one at a thrift store for like 14 bucks, you know, a couple of weeks ago. I bought that tree, and then I threw some lights on How can you not buy the $14 full-size tree? So I did, and it's great. There's a, It's like living in a Christmas village, man. My house is fun right now. So yeah. it, But it took a while. It took days to put up all the ornaments and I was afraid of letting usually when we do it we have this these few ornaments from my father's aunt so my great aunt my daughter's great great aunt and she was a Ravensbrück Catholic concentration camp survivor my father was a Bergen-Belsen concentration camp survivor as a Catholic my you know my grandmother my aunt another aunt you know we had the Peremskis along with, we, you know, we just respect that journey. And right. I know there are many, many Jewish people. We're not trying to take that away at all. I'm just saying this is my family's experience. So my aunt, Chocha Stefania, Chocha is how you say aunt in Polish. So Stefania was her name, Chocha Stefania. So Chocha Stefania, when she came back to war-torn Warsaw after being in Ravensbrück, she wanted to have, you know, it was Christmas, at some point it was Christmas time and she didn't have money for ornaments. So she made her ornaments out of, I guess toothpaste tubes used to be more metal, right. out of metal toothpaste tubes and chocolate wrappers and thread. And wow. she made them in the images of, um, what do you call it, in the images of a Polish opera characters. So she would have whole operas on different branches of her tree. Oh, my goodness. It was incredible, stunning. Don Quixote and Sancho Panza. They had um, 
there, I, I can't remember the Polish operas right now. But anyway, it was stunning. So she gave me some when I was in Poland. Oh so every time we put up the Christmas tree, this is like, the, and they're just little. They're like this big. These are the ornaments. And we say every year, girls, this is who we are. We take, you know, she went through very difficult time, but she didn't lose her hope. She didn't lose her childhood spirit. She didn't lose her joy. She chose it. And so we put this on our tree as a reminder that this is a major theme for our family, that no matter what happens with the Lord, you choose hope, you choose joy, you move forward. If you have to make your um, celebrate with toothpaste tubes and chocolate wrappers and thread, that's what you do until something better comes along. And you create beautiful things. Out yes. of the world doesn't see the beauty in it, but you create it. You make... Yes beauty out of pain that's, that's right. and we're doing it at this moment you do something beautiful with your pain you give through your pain and that transforms your pain so that's part of why I want to do the podcast now is because it's helpful to me to know that this is helpful to other people that exactly. actually breathes life into me mm -hmm. um, so I was afraid okay this is another 20 minute podcast that's just it Joey it's 20 minutes <laughs> but, um, but um, I was afraid to let other people into our ornament zone because if they're talking too much or, you know, what's the big deal with like the chocolate wrapper ornaments, that would really hurt my feelings. Right. So, and it takes time. Mm -hmm. And I, and I just prayed about it and I said, Lord, why not, whoever comes is who comes. And Natalie Simmons, who's in our videos, um, she's one of my original widows. She's like, you're not answering your phone. And I am just going, I'm coming. I'm coming now. <laughs> so she came oh, that's and another that's friend, beautiful. she's awesome. She's like, I'll be there. I will be there in like an hour. Oh my goodness. <laughs> and then another friend of mine, Gina, who's so amazing. She was like, I'm coming. So I said, okay, so this is who it is. And, and my mother-in-law, Sylvia was all, already there. And I thought, okay, here's what I'm going to do. Okay, here's where I get a little quirky. I'm going to trust them with garland. We're going to, I've already put the lights on the trees. Now we're at the next level. You know, level one is put the tree out. Level two is to light the tree. Level three is garland. Level four is ornaments. Level five is tinsel. And we are tinsel people. <laughs> and so level, I was like, all right, I'm going to trust them with level three. I'm going to let them help me put the garland on. Okay, so that went well. That that was not, I was okay. So I thought, all right, I'm going to trust them with like a Christmas ball, like a, just a round red ball. We're going to see how putting the anchor ornaments, we do have anchor ornaments, one consistent color, and then you fill in with the others, right? right. So I'm like, if you will, and I, I know some of y'all are going to, Okay, this is just who I am. If you will please triangulate the anchor ornaments, the, the red... <laughs> You'll please triangulate. I'm sorry. I know. I know. Oh my goodness. But okay, this is not, this is my that's why I don't invite people to do ornaments with me. And so, yeah, right. <laughs> so I'm like, please. And you know what? They triangulated, and it was beautiful. And my and I I loosened the reins, and I was like, all right, girls, you can go triangulate that other tree, or you know. So they put the ornaments on, and then Sophie's like, mommy, what about this one? And she held up this old jar that holds the Polish ornaments, you know, the mm -hmm. Church of Stefania made. And I'm like, all right, here we go. And I started to tell the ornament stories. Oh, my. And you know what? It was beautiful. My dear friends and my mom-in-law, they appreciated it, and they saw it, and they treasured it with us, and they enjoyed it with us. And that was beautiful. That was just a beautiful moment. And it told me that when you're letting people into your, the sacred spaces of your holidays, you can. it's okay to trust them in levels. It's okay to go garland first. And then like a lower element first. <laughs> and then balls. build, yeah. yeah, you know, well, maybe some, you can do some red Christmas balls. We'll see yeah. how that goes, you know. <laughs> and then you can build up to seeing are they ready to be in your sacred space but being open and having that happen my home is filled I mean it's 
beautiful. I'll post some pictures, okay? And actually, right now, um, it's usually on our 180U site, but in honor of my dad, we're letting people watch the documentary, Burning Questions, which actually features, there's a little part about in it about my aunt's ornaments. So if you want to see my Church of Stefania and my father, our journey back to Poland after, um, you know, my, my father as a concentration camp survivor, but the journey of reconnecting with our Polish family, which included these incredible Christmas ornaments, um, go on to the 180 Year Grief website for probably the month of December. We'll have that, um, a link to that video up there so that you can watch it for free and understand who my dad is and um, the beauty of making something, the purpose of making something beautiful out of something that was painful. Yes. I think that, you know, for me, empowering the holidays is about opening up your options honoring and remembering the way you celebrated it before, mm -hmm. trusting people in steps, letting mm -hmm. them go closer and closer into your sacred space, maybe not having, I didn't want a huge party of people doing ornaments with us, but two, three people that I knew well, that was a good choice in our sacred space. And now the result is, man, it's so much fun. Like we have a tree in the den to put on a movie and the tree is there and we're eating our yummy food and hanging. We got to do what we normally do. Mm -hmm. I just had to open up the way that it was going to happen. Thoughts? I think you did it well. I think that's the healthiest thing to do, to open yourself up when you, uh, everything in your body is telling you to close down. Yeah. Everything is shutting down. Uh, not breathing, not moving, not eating, not sleeping, all those Not things. connecting. Not connecting. Mm -hmm. And uh, you want to isolate. Mm -hmm. And you have to do the opposite. You've got to defy gravity. Mm -hmm. That's it's right. It's all a defiance of gravity. Uh, and that takes a spiritual leap of faith, too, that there is a God who will catch us if we go into that leap, into other people's arms, and letting people in, and actually making those connections. And I just have to say, it it would have been exhausting for me to decorate three trees, <laughs> you know, oh even goodness. to decorate one. I just kept thinking, I'm going to tell those stories, and my girls and I, you know, we're going to feel sad because we're going to feel that vacuum of right. Papa not being physically with us, though we feel him in our heart. Um, having other people join who are trusted people mm -hmm. and opening up that journey, it was beautiful. So try that. Try that with your holidays. See what happens. And another thing that you can do to empower the holidays is giving. Um, we, we do something called Gift Cards Giving Hope, uh, where Jay, my late husband's birthday is December 5th. So we actually collect gift cards and give them to widowed families that need them. And giving a present away um, is just such a wonderful way to... Uh, actually, my friend, I think it was Gina, it was one of my friends who had said, I've lost this loved one, and I, and I still want to do something on their birthday. And I'm like, you still can. You can just do it for somebody else. And I think it's that way during the holidays, is when you give something away, then it really empower. it just infuses joy. And that's how I start to feel like a kid at Christmas again, when we do that gift cards giving hope. Um, so if you want to send us gift cards, we will give them to widowed families that need them. You can send them to P.O. Box 72347. Send them to 180 or Grief, P.O. Box 72347, uh, Marietta, Georgia, 30007. And um, we will distribute them to widowed families that need them for the holidays. Um, otherwise, and we they are vetted widowed families. We don't just do it randomly online because there's no way to vet that for me. Um, but we do, there are widows in our group, there are widows through Kate's Club and through other widowed organizations that we know their leaders and we give the gift cards to known people. So I'm sorry that we don't have a way right now to just randomly do it at large, but we do do it within the Atlanta community here. Um, and remember, it's yeah. more blessed to give. To and you know what? You can do it in your community. You can collect gift cards and give them to families that need them. And that, that is a wonderful way to empower your holidays. 
Um, it just infuses so much joy. So I hope that these ideas have been helpful. Um, oh, another thing that we did, uh, Joey, how much time do we have? We're at 20 right now. Okay. Well, then, um, just one, you know, reclaiming your space. Uh, my mom-in-law, Sylvia, who's staying with us, mm -hmm. she's staying in my dad's room. She's sleeping in my dad's bed, the bed he transitioned to heaven in. And you know what? It has real, it has layered something. Uh, that, that room, if you don't go back in and reclaim it, sometimes you get afraid to go back in. And I started to reclaim that within the first hour of going home, of to just sit in there. And it's okay to reclaim your spaces. And when you first do it, take a loved one with you. Take somebody who knows you and loves you, a safe person. Um, and of course, talk to a counselor if you need to, if these are major, major spaces for you. But I've been doing it for years. When you reclaim those spaces, initially it's hard, but then there's a freedom. Layer a new memory. My new memory is I'm going to, you know, in the morning go and lay down next to my mom-in-law and go, okay, what are we going to do today? <laughs> you know? And that was a beautiful way of re breathing life into a place that was sad for me. And I, I want you guys to be able to do that as well. Man, men and ladies, you know? You don't want to be scared of a part of no. your house, that's for sure. No, reclaim your space. It's your exactly. space. What if it's like a park or you used to go to a certain play at Christmas? Well, then take people with you. Have a good time. It's your life. God wants you, your loved one in heaven wants you to live a good life. So let it change a little bit. Reclaim your space. Do something new. Own these holidays. Don't let them own you. You know, own them. You can do this and empower your family and see the new adventures that open up. Absolutely. Okay? Yes. Yeah. All right. Well, our next uh, podcast, we're going to talk about activating your posse. Um, so that's happening for me. I thought it happened 10 years. I'm activating my posse again. So some new things that I've learned in that process. Thanks for being with us. God bless. If you would like to support our nonprofit 180 Year Grief, which um, empowers widows both here in Atlanta and online and moving out to other states, we need your help. So please consider donating today. Visit us at 180yeargrief.org. You can look at our curriculum at 180yearlife.com. God bless. Enjoy. Thank Enjoy you. your holidays. Bye-bye.